You probably want to know what is the secret sauce, if any, when it comes to selling a house. Let's take a closer look at the nine habits that all successful home sellers have in common, and you can put them to work today and make your own secret sauce. My name is Andrew Finney and my passion is helping you make sense of real estate. If you need help finding a top agent near you or if you simply want to drop me a line to say hello, my contact info is below. If you're new here, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel now and like this video. Thank you. All right, my friend, let's take a closer look at this because there is definitely a difference and there are definitely a commonalities of a successful home seller to an unsuccessful home seller. Now, what does it really take at the end of the day beyond just the price? I mean, everybody tells you price, right? Okay, that's definitely important, but let's get real. What else does it take? Keep your house looking fantastic and smelling and great. So there's nine things that you can do along those lines to be prepared to be successful. Your first daily habit is to keep your house clean. Now I'm not talking about going out and busting out a merry maid's job on your house every single day. I'm talking about simply tidying up. Clean up behind yourself as you go about your house. It's a good living habit as a homeowner anyways. But if we're cleaning the dishes, we're doing our thing because let's face it, we're living there. We got to cook, we got to eat and all that fun stuff, right? Let's not leave our dishes and old food and stuff in the sink and on the counters. I can't count the amount of times that I've shown homes with buyers and they walk in and they get that smell you know that smell that food gets the next day and it's not a pleasurable one in most cases and we walk in and they say Andrew I thought they were one of the seller house and I respond to them you know it was on the multiple listing service we were checking it out at the office before we got here but yeah I completely agree with you at the end of the day seller should have put this away tidying up is one of the quickest and easiest things to do by simply whatever mess that you make simply by whatever mess occurs maybe if you have pets or kids cleaning it up on the spot it's a healthy homeowner habit but when it comes to selling your home it's extremely important make sure you let your home is clean at all times and what you'll find is that you won't need to deep clean but maybe once a week or once every two weeks if you're tidying up behind yourself. Your second daily habit is to respond quickly to offers. Yeah, I get it. You have a job, you have a life, you have kids, you got things going on, and I get that. I appreciate that. So does the buyer. So when they make that offer to you, we've got to be able to communicate as quickly as possible. You might be in a meeting, you might be on a plane somewhere, that's all okay. What it comes down to is great communication with your trusted real estate advisor of the best times to contact you. Because if your trusted real estate advisor can call the buyer agent and say, hey, just want to confirm that I received your offer uh, for 123 Main Street. Just want to let you know that my sellers will be in a position to chat here in about two to three hours. And they actually say, hey, that'd be 2 p.m., 3 p.m. or whatever. That's really good. And what that does is it gives the expectations and it does two things. Number one, in the buyer's agent and the buyer's mind, they have confirmed receipt of the offer, which trust me, there is some anxiety. Did they get the offer? Did they get the offer, right? There is that anxiety. So once they get that, then they want to know what is a realistic time frame they can expect to receive a response. A lot of offers are generally written with a 12 to 24 hour requested response time that the offer is null and void if that time lapses. But the shorter amount of time that it can take for you to make a decision or to come to a counter offer or whatever conversation you wanna have with your trusted real estate advisor about how to proceed with that offer needs to happen as quickly as possible. Doing so will keep that buyer on the hook because keep in mind, your home is listed, you have the offer, but what else is going down in reality? In reality, there's other homes coming out of the market. At any given moment in time, another home could come on the market that the buyer falls in love with more. And they might make an offer on that property and that seller was responsive. Let's keep you in the game by being responsive and quick to answer any offers. The third daily habit is to hype up your property. Now, yes, your listing agent should absolutely have a strong marketing game. And hopefully you Google this agent to begin with and notice their online presence. It's something I talk about a lot. And I'm going to keep reiterating the points of Googling an agent and checking those online ratings, reviews, and past sales performance because it's that important to do. As opposed to just Googling where you're gonna eat tonight, let's Google the agent that's helping you out with the biggest investment and possibly the most money that you'll ever make at one time from the sale of a property. But let's just be real about that, all right? That being said, when it comes to building a buzz, hyping up the property, your agent should have a very good online presence and have a good social media game plan. Let's face it, a lot of people on social media from Instagram to Facebook to YouTube, you're here with me right now. It's awesome, thank you for being here. To all the other different ways to approach somebody social media is your online marketing in addition to having professional photography taken which is a given needs to happen of at least 35 high-res photos to put your home in its best light why don't you get your 
your mindset around playing Match.com and you're we're looking for a suitor. We need someone to court your home by going and looking at it. And if they really like it, we want them to put a ring on it in the form of a 30 year fixed rate mortgage in many cases, right? We need them to fall in love. But how do they know this priceless jewel known as your house is available if it's not being exposed for all that it is? This is where hyping up your property. Your role in this is to simply tell everybody you work with, talk to all your family, talk to all your friends and let them know your home is on the market. Put it out on your own social media as well. Your listing agent will be doing the same thing and of course they're probably phone calling your neighborhood they're also probably talking about maybe doing an open house depending on the area you may be in in the United States maybe open houses are work quite well and they're a thing but they're not always a thing depending on where you live it's just something to know about how open houses work in your area whether they work or not so at the end of the day what needs to happen is to have a strong robust game plan your listing agent should be talking to all the brokers all the different agents they know hyping up that interest maybe doing a broker's open now that's a smart move for an agent to do as a broker's open and the also smart thing to do is go take a look at all the local businesses around the area where your home is and making your listing information in print form available by asking permission of the business owner if they could display that. Because here's the thing, how many people go to those local businesses? They won't be in business unless there's people going in there. If there's people going in there, chances are they're renting or they live in the area and they might be looking to upgrade into a home just like yours. It takes a well-formed marketing strategy to really pull off a home sale in the shortest amount of time at the best price possible. The fourth healthy habit is a weekly deep clean inside and out of the house. Now this is the second time we're talking about cleaning your house. The first one was tidying up behind yourself on the daily. This one on the weekly, deep clean your house. You know what this means? Make it happen. The fifth thing that you can do is to purge your closets and your cabinets on a monthly basis. Now, what are we talking about? Chances are whenever you're getting ready to move out and you've been doing some packing to get ready for that offer that's gonna come in and you're getting ready to move out, right? You probably have noticed some things that you haven't seen in like umpteen years. Like seriously, it's like an old tennis racket and it's got a hole in the racket, but you had sentimental value or something over said tennis racket, or maybe a golf club that kind of has a sock on it and you forgot that you own golf clubs or something. You get the point. There's gonna be some some things in your house that you have already forgotten about for just being there for so long. Purge it out. Declutter your space. Let a buyer see how much space your home truly provides. Doing so on a monthly basis is going to help you get ready to move. It's going to enable you to have time to either give away certain things to your family and friends, sell them, or to simply donate them whatever your choice is, but it gives you that chance to do it and it's a very healthy habit to establish. The sixth thing that you wanna do is every single month, walk the exterior of your house and look for any home maintenance items that may need to be done. Maybe you notice the shrub is starting to grow up against the house. We know this is not a good idea as a homeowner, don't we? Because it can cause problems to the siding of the house and the foundation of the house. And if it's a tree and it's growing onto the roof, it goes without saying that can damage the roof, right? If you notice that kind of stuff every month, then just take your trimmers out Trim it up, there you go. If you notice that one of your sprinklers are leaking, then that's the time to fix it. If you notice something needs a bust out a bead of caulk on it on the outside around a window to keep it appropriately maintained, that's the time to do it. Also, at the same time, touch up paint, right? It keeps a home in really good condition and the better maintained your home is when a buyer comes into your home, they're going to see that love and that care that you're giving the house. And they're going to feel very good that you've taken very good care of that house and likely going to be willing to offer you more money as a result because they're not going to be as concerned about home maintenance if they see that it was done. The seventh thing you want to do is talk to your listing agent on a weekly basis. Your agent should be in communication with you a minimum of once a week, even when you're on the market. Most definitely when you're on the market, they should be in touch with you, letting you know what the showing activity looks like, any showing feedback from the buyer agents, letting you know once a week what they're doing to help your home get sold. I always put together a report and I let the sellers know, boom, 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 boom. These are the actions that I took. I called 200 people around your community this last week. I did some social media marketing and right now we have about 3,000 hits on that social media marketing. We had 10 showings and we had two offers. There you go, right? It's really easy to do and break it out in a report. So you need to have that conversation with your trusted real estate advisor and a top-notch agent isn't gonna have any issues with that whatsoever. Now, some people, some sort of say, hey, Andrew, you know, that's a little too much. Look, at the end of the day, as a trusted real estate advisor, we're gonna communicate with you the way that you wanna be communicated with at the frequency and pace that you like. So it's something to identify when you're in the listing appointment of what methods you like. Is it an email? Is it a text message? Is it a phone call? Is it a video message? Is it an in-person meeting? So many different ways to meet up and have this conversation. Every couple weeks on the market, you wanna be reviewing market conditions and trends together so that we can confirm that the listing strategy is still the correct strategy and make adjustments as necessary. Every three weeks on market, you wanna be considering about making a meaningful price reduction. When I'm talking about meaningful, the last time you saw a store that said, hey, we're gonna have a 1% sale this weekend. Did you go? 
Probably not because it was only saving you 1%, right? So if you wanna get the market shocked and you wanna get the market amped and you need that little fresh juice, the, the little showing activity that revamp your listing, a 3% to 5% drop will make that happen. Now you're probably thinking, Andrew, I own a $500,000 house. If I do a 3% to 5% drop, that is like 15 to $25,000. Are you insane? Not at all. Here's what the market has already told us about the $500,000 price. It doesn't like it. A lot of homes will get the majority of their activity in between week three and week five. The first three weeks on market is actually when it generates the most interest. But if your home has been on the market for three weeks, then it starts fading. If you're looking at a little line graph, it'll start fading down. By week five, it's just kind of become whatever. We've seen that, we're over it. Gotta think about yourself in the role of a buyer. Your chances are that you're looking for a home right now, right? If you see the same home again and again and again and again, it can only be on the market for let's say 35 days. But in your mind's eye, after seeing it so many times, you might be thinking, my God, why is it on the market so long? This home's been on the market for like months and it's completely natural it happens but we don't want that to happen to your home so you need to be prepared and be honest to make a meaningful price adjustment now if you say Andrew we went down five percent that's twenty five thousand dollars it makes me nervous it probably does it probably makes your listing agent nervous too but the reality is we've got to find the right price and if we chase the price backwards and one percent increments we're not doing you any favors and we're not doing a real good service for you because you're gonna keep chasing harder and then you might be selling for ten percent under your current list price if that's the case by dropping at five percent making that first one like ripping a band-aid off right think about a band-aid is it better to peel it or rip it I, I personally just rip the damn thing off because it's easier to get over the steam faster same thing is true when you're making a price reduction on a property by dropping that price what do you think is gonna happen well let's again put yourself back into the buyer's role when you see a price reduction on a house like that what are you thinking chances are there's a few different things that come through mind being like okay maybe there was something wrong with it or maybe they had a low appraisal or you know what but it hasn't been on the market that long and it hasn't gotten a contract yet you know what the seller wants wants to sell they're serious now you're thinking that now you're getting antsy and you want to go see that property what do you think other buyers in your marketplace are doing too they're seeing the same thing and like oh my god now I gotta go see this house as quickly as possible I need to jump I need to pounce on this house so what did happen now what happens if you hit 10 showings as a result of that 5% price reduction and you got three offers two offers is known as this thing called a bidding war now do you think that you might be covering the point spread difference in between the price reduction and possibly getting up to the listing price or close to it again absolutely Absolutely, and stands to reason that it is one of the options that could happen. Think about it and have that conversation with your trusted real estate advisor. Be prepared for those conversations every week, two weeks, and three weeks. That's a very good pace and frequency to keep in contact. The eighth thing that you want to do is simply as a homeowner getting ready to sell your home, you should have been maintaining your home very well every single year. So before you went on the market, I hope that your trusted real estate advisor had shared with you the importance of making sure that you did all your home maintenance prior to going on market, ideally had a home pre-inspection and made any repairs that were needed and kept the receipts to provide them to the prospective buyer. If not, maybe that's something that you want to consider doing now if you haven't already done so. And the ninth thing is to be flexible with showings. Please, there's nothing more frustrating than when I represent a buyer and we're trying to work with their schedule to go see a property. Of course, we know the seller has a schedule too, but they're like, hey, I don't want any showings happening whenever I'm not home. I don't want a lockbox on my home. And the only time you can show the property is in between 4.30 p.m. and 5.45 p.m. Really? If you were my seller, I probably wouldn't work with you, frankly, because there's no way to do that in an hour and 15 minutes a day, seven days a week, because it's not realistic. The majority of buyers need to be able to see the property as they have time off and as they have the ability to go, whether it's a quick lunch break, whether it's a short break during the workday, whether it's just a complete house hunt mode because they took time off from work. They need to be able to go. And if you want your home to sell, you want to be open-minded towards showings and you want to be extremely accommodating of any and all showings and flexible with the any kind of constraints that you might have in mind. The best practice here is to simply unshackle your listing agent and let them sell your home and have the conversation with them. If you want them to be in the house for any and all showings, okay, a lot of listing agents will be happy to do that, representing your best interest. Have that conversation with them, come to an understanding and make sure that you're flexible and the showings are easy for your house. It'll really go a long ways to helping you get a great offer. Speaking of that, let's talk about the eight things your listing agent should be doing for you and the 10 worst home selling mistakes that you're probably making. Looking forward to our next conversation. We'll see you in a few.